Um, Alright, um, I have purchased a Robo 3D printer, and it's one of the new R1s, and uh, it has the same leaking extruder problem. Um, let me see if I can... So you can see the plastic on top of that uh, extruder block right there. You know, that, you know, is all melt coming out of their all metal extruder. Um, plus, it also has a bad fan, which you can kind of see um, right there. You know, that's actually the bad fan. It makes all kinds of uh, strange noises every now and then. Anyway, I contacted Robo 3D and they got back with me fairly quickly on this and they sent me this kit in the mail um, you know which they responded pretty quickly to my needs and everything so I mean um, the thing is I'm not exactly sure if they have any instruction videos on how to use this I mean there's no instructions that came with it um, I've yet to contact them um, about that but they haven't told me of uh, any videos or anything they had I did say I would try to make a video of how to do this thing um, you know because I need to replace that fan and the extruder you know because they didn't have the uh, extruder you know which that's the extruder right there you know they didn't have it properly um, secure to the heater block there um, because they were supposed to do it when it was hot you know well um, they didn't know that because apparently they you know had a second source for this thing um, let me turn the light off here but yeah they were supposed to like have a second source for this thing and they um, um, their manufacturer of the extruder head didn't tell them they're supposed to attach this block to that Well, it's hot, so that's why they had the leak But other than that, you know, like I said, you know, you can see here's my Robo 3d printer The only thing I've done to it right now is I just took the shroud off, you know, which you can see the little screw holes there Well, you know, they plug in, you know, these little um, Protrusions here, you know, there's a captured nut in there. So this comes on and off pretty easily but, you know, you should actually run this thing with the uh, shroud on it so that these uh, um, rods here can be captured by it because uh, that actually keeps the platform more stable. Plus, that also helps you control the cable, too. Um, you know, keep that up out of the way. So that's the main functions that hood serves. Otherwise, I'd almost rather run it without it since you've got better view of the whole thing. This way, you know, with the with cover off, you know, excuse the mess, but I'm trying to get this uh, thing working here. But in any event, let's take this kit apart real quick and see what they sent us. Um, you, know, you can see here, and I've already actually opened this, but I put it back together for this video. Um, this is a length of cable. Um, not exactly sure what this does. I'm not exactly sure what a lot of this stuff does. Um, this is another length of cable, which I'm not sure what goes to. Um, this is some sort of a plate. I don't know, you know, exactly why they sent me this or if that's necessary. I kind of hope not. This is a cable, which appears to be the cable that connects to the fan here. Um, put that out there. Um, it's a little wrench they sent me, which I'm not exactly sure what that's for yet. Um, this is another length of cable, which again, I'm not sure what that is. That's the heating element. Right there. Um, this is a fan shroud, which appears to be different in design from the one that's on the printer right now. I'm not totally sure, but I think it's different. But I can't get a good look at that one that's installed on it already. This is some sort of a rubber boot, which mates with this, uh, you know, heater block here. 
Um, and you can see how they did this thing. It's a pretty nice looking little piece of kit here. But uh, <clears throat> right there is an area for set screw. Um, here is where, you know, this um, heating element should install. And I've been able to deduce that. Um, let me see if I can... But this extruder, you know, you can see this little rubber um, boot here. You know, you can see that these have holes that align. So this just kind of snaps on. You know, it has these little um, clips on the top of it. I don't know if you can see right there where my, where my thumb is that actually wrap around and grip the top of the head. So that's how that's supposed to mount. Now they do have, if you look in here, you know, a series of set screws and little Allen wrenches they provided. And if you grab the silver Allen wrench and thread it onto the set screw onto the tip of it. And then it actually feeds in right through there. First time I did this, I had the boot off of it. You, you can put this set screw in before you put the boot on if you want. Um, but that leaves you only one place the heating element can go. So that's right into there. And I assume you insert it all the way in. Um, as far as it'll go, and then tighten the set screw around it. I'm not tightening it that tight. I don't want to crush it. But um, you know that gives you what appears to be a completed assembly block. Now this plate slides on the top of this for some reason, but I don't know if I have to replace this plate or not. But again, I have yet to take apart my Robo 3D assembly because I'm not even sure where the, how the, the shroud hooks onto this, you know, that's a bizarre thing. As you can see that pattern right here, you know, well that actually corresponds to the shape of this uh, housing. But then again, it's not exactly aligned, so I'm wondering if I need to loosen this, you know, to get it aligned in some way with, with this. Because, you know, you can see that, you know, it just doesn't, you know, uh, the flats really don't line up with the, the heater block here. Um, it appears there might be a set screw right there. Um, I'm kind of afraid to mess with it at this point until I take the other extruder off and kind of see what they did with that. Um, but this, this little smaller Allen wrench seems to be locking into something. I'm not sure. But they provided me a whole bunch of set screws in there that I'm not sure what it's before. Um, they also failed to send me any um, I hate this tripod. Um, they failed to send me any you know, screws for the fan. I'm not really sure what the flow direction is on it. It's uh, presumably that way, but I'll have to reference the other fan to see if that mounts. But you can see there's some screw bosses there. The fan it's going to line up either like this or the reverse. Um, one of those two ways, but again, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look at the other fan because I don't think the sticker is uh, viewable on the other fan, but I'm not sure. But I know this is supposed to sit on here somehow, you know, and something like that, I, I assume. Um, and this little wire here, I think you know, is the cable to the fan, because, well, it doesn't look like it can be, because they're both uh, females. Um, so I'm not really sure what this is for. Let's see if they have a something that mates properly with this. I guess, you know, they sent me this big long wire. I guess you could actually pull the whole wire out of the, you know, out of the uh, split loom tube and replace the whole thing, but I hope we don't 
come to that because that might be more of a hassle. Um, this looks like too heavy of a gauge wire for that little fan. This looks like an alternative to it, and it's got a male, so let's see if it mates. Um, let's see. Yeah, it does mate, and this is a pretty lengthy piece of wire. And what I'm going to probably do is just simply splice it in, because they also sent me... You know, this, which is a replacement wire tie because the cables or the wiring assembly, the harness is held on to the print head, you know, with wire ties, so those have got to be cut and replaced. And these are little pieces of heat shrink tubing they've included, you know, so that I can actually perform a solder and splice on this thing, you know, which is best to solder it if you're capable of soldering, you know, a couple of wires together if you have the kit for it or the skill and the. Um, equipment for it. Like I said, otherwise this does look like it would be a replacement connector for the whole thing if you wanted to just do it solderlessly and run it through the split loom tubing. You know, if you wanted to use this, for example, which is a complete assembly, as you can, you know, see the, you know, male and female connectors on both ends, but it's got this split loom tubing here, you know, which like I said does have a a split in it, you know, and you could, you know, undo these wire ties and rerun the whole wire because see, this one doesn't have a connector on it. This little fan, it's about the only thing here that doesn't have a connector on it, you know, but they're, they've changed that now to where it does. That's why they're sending the one with an actual connector on it. But I would have to actually unstring that wire clear out of this assembly and pull the cover off the back of this and you know, so I can get to the controller and plug this in, but I'm going to try to do this in a way that I don't have to do that, but, you know, we'll see. Um, anyway, that's it for now.